Hey, guys, welcome back. It is time to take a look at a case closed example of one of the things we've covered on the channel here. Um, yeah, we, you might recognize this plushy pic here where the uh, the criminal came in, looked at the camera like a wiener baby supreme. Uh, and uh, I'd like to say that the, the two individuals that were involved in this break in at Punch Out Gaming have been apprehended, have been charged for their wrongdoing. So we're going to take a look at it all. We're going to take a little look back at what happened. We have February 10th, 2022. Punch-Out Gaming made a post on Facebook where they said Punch-Out Gaming was broken into last night. This guy broke into the neighbor's store and cut holes through our wall. He took cash and over $200,000 worth of product. If anyone knows him, please message me or call me at and the, and the store's number there. So we got... Uh, it's kind of hard to see everything. Stupid Facebook layout. All right. We have the fox jacket. Very nice of him to not cover his entire face uh, and to look straight at the camera, to wear some identifiable clothing. You, you got to you gotta love that. You got you to gotta absolutely love the, the cunning, brave, and smartness of these criminals. Uh, let's, uh, let's watch the video here real quick. I don't, yeah, it's only 36 seconds. We're, we'll give it a watch just in case anyone hasn't seen the last video. If you haven't seen the last video, I'll put it up here uh, if you want to go back and watch that. But uh, essentially, we have our super duper lacking intelligence criminal breaking in here through the wall, cut a hole in the wall from the store next door. Uh, him and another individual was, I guess the other one was more of a getaway driver. He notices the camera. He wants to, he gives it a little... Blows it a little kiss here, I guess. Finger bangs it a little bit. Um, I don't know what I don't know what exactly he did to the camera there, but it, it it's, it's still rolling. It's absolutely still rolling. Uh, you can see here that he's in the back storage area. Um, lots of Pokemon product. I mean, the, the the article that we're gonna read. I don't know. We'll see whether or not we feel like watching the actual news broadcast. It's always funny to get a take uh, from people that are kind of more normy and not really in tune with what the hell is Pokemon cards and why are they valuable and that they are valuable and they're surprised by it. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll save that to the end just in case you guys want a little little sneaky peeky. All right, here is the, the video, the original video that I put out. Uh, channel has grown significantly then, since then. We got not only are we not in the, the black rattle hat, we are, we're in the, the, the beta um, alpha, 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 the, the pre hat to the hats. We have the, the original, um, rocket hat there. Uh, you can see it's a little warped. I think I washed it at that point and the, the materials were not great. So it did not, did not like that. But, uh, essentially, yeah, we had a video on this pretty entertaining stuff. Um, really glad that, that the, the perps are apprehended. I don't know whether or not this is going to like result in this never happening again, because it seems like these guys have a criminal history who would have thought the people that are breaking into the card shop and stealing all the Pokemon cards, uh, were criminals prior to that. It's, a, it's, a, it's almost like once a criminal, always a criminal kind of thing. Uh, clearly they haven't learned their lesson. Uh, here's the video. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll save that to the end, just in case anyone wants to see it. It's... It's a little painful. We got we got the Fox Nine hosts here uh, discussing the incident when they, they clearly know nothing about it. But I mean, I guess they can't know everything about anything about everything at all. All right, Forest Lake, Minnesota. In Pokemon, the goal is to catch them all. Now, more than a year after a brazen robbery in Forest Lake, authorities have done just that. So, man, these articles. Um, whether it's games journalism or this, there's always like it's. Um, it, you remember when you're you're in school. I know it's been a long time for me. I'm an old, dirty old man. But <laughs> remember in your school and you're trying to hit that threshold for like the 500 word essay or something like that. And you're just inserting some stupid crap about like Pokemon catchphrases just to like hit that minimum word count. That, that's exactly what this reminds me. Of. This is this is why we have this now. In February of last year, these were caught on camera breaking into punch out gaming criminal char charges state Matthew Cupers and Dustin Whitturn worked together to break into the store using a knife to cut through drywall, sneaking in through a hole and stealing $150,000 in Pokemon card packs and merchandise. So the number, the value, total value has kind of changed, fluctuated. So I don't know what the actual real number is, uh, but maybe it, maybe they just kind of gave an estimate with the 200 uh, and then it ended up being 150 or maybe just Fox didn't do the research and maybe it's 
who knows who knows who knows guys i don't know the i don't know the exact numbers uh but uh but yeah Cubers and Wittern are now facing third-degree burglary charges. Good. Good on them. Online sleuths were able to identify the men quickly off the surveillance video, but it took law enforcement a bit longer to make their case. Knowing who these guys were for the last 13, 14 months drove us crazy since they were still running around on the streets, said owner Eric Johnson. In the end, it was what the men left behind at the scene that sealed their fate. Once the DNA came, these guys already had huge criminal records, so that helped push it, said Johnson. Since the heist, the store has made some major security upgrades. They've also leased the space next door, where the thieves broke in, and are transforming it into a new gaming area. So I guess it's kind of like a... It's kind of maybe a good thing. We got a, a nice little gaming area for people to go over and enjoy. Um, nice that they're, that they're doing well enough that they could expand, especially since, you know, the park, not that the Pokemon market or the, the gaming market, etc. has like gone to oblivion, but it's definitely not what it once was um, and probably not what it was back in, in 2022 when, when this occurred. So good on them. Um, awesome to see that. And again, we'll come back to this, uh, later on here. We, uh, we can, we can go take a look. So not only the DNA evidence, but also the fact that these absolute morons, uh, decided to look right at the camera. I mean, you, you can probably just pull up the, the people most likely, uh, the, the police probably could have just pulled up the most likely people to, to burgle and, and these two would have shown up. So let's take a look at some, uh, some records here online. Uh, all very public information. We got the St. Louis or St. Louis County, Minnesota. I always call it, there's like the, I don't know how widespread it is in the world, but in Canada we have this like uh, St. Uh, St. Louis Bar and Grill. And I always, I like, I like to call it St. Louis. I know it's not. And I've heard it like actually said by the commercials and stuff like that, but I don't know. Louis, and uh, maybe, maybe it's the, the, the French, the French area, French um, Canadians that are, are getting me on the Louis bus. All right. We have incident date. This is back in 2017. So again, probably didn't learn his lesson. We have incident location, Marine, a general warehouse, rural Duluth. Again, the locations, hopefully I'm pronouncing these correctly because I'm not, I'm not from there. I don't want, I'm, and I'm not going to go look it up. I'm not going to call somebody up in Duluth and find out if I'm saying it right. Incident summary. On August 13th, 2017, an enclosed trailer was stolen from the, the warehouse area of a local business. Marine General, located on London Road, has a storage location in rural Duluth. The location was burglarized and an enclosed trailer was stolen. The trailer was later recovered. However, its contents have not been found. Over 3,000 fishing lures were inside the trailer. The lures are manufactured by Brad's Killer Fishing Gear and are marked as lipsticks. 3D. They are in a variety of colors. Efforts to identify the suspects have been unsuccessful. The sheriff's office would like to ask the public for help in identifying the individuals involved with this theft. With thousands of these very specific models of lures stolen, undoubtedly attempts will be made to sell or trade them. Anyone with information is urged to call 911. 911? Holy crap. I would think more. Don't call 911 if you have tips and tricks. For the police, for the love of God, save that for emergencies or the sheriff's office criminal investigation division. Cool. All right. We have additional information or update. We have Matthew here. How, what, who on this planet thinks that you can steal um, 3,000 fishing lures of a very distinct make and model uh, and, and resell these? Who are you going to, who are you going to sell these to? You like it's not like you can use them yourself, or you can sell them to one person. That's like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through three thousand lures in my in my lifetime. That is a that is a great idea. So, I, it's the same as the unreleased Pokemon stuff. It's like the, the trail the trail is right straight back to you. It's, you're you're dumb if you think stealing this is a good idea. It's not like something that there's a jillion McBillion of out there in the wild that you can. If, if it's like electronics or, well, even the electronics, when, when it starts having like serial numbers on it and stuff like that, um, it, at least, oh my God, something that, 
Okay, never mind. Well, all right, let's get through the rest of this. Additional information or update. On October 7th, 2017, the fishing lures and many other items of merchandise were recovered from a storage shed in Morgan Park. Attached is a photo showing most of the stolen lures still in factory packaging. The retail value of the recovered items exceeds $25,000. On October 13th, yeah, $25,000, but how the hell do you sell those without getting caught? You make a Facebook marketplace, and you're like, oh, I got uh, 3,000 fishing lures here for sale, guys. Does anyone want to buy 1,000 at a time? On October 13, 2017, investigators from the uh, St. Louis County Sheriff's Office arrested Matthew Cupers for felony theft. In reference to this case, he was booked into the uh, St. Louis County Jail. Numerous items of marine general merchandise still remain missing, and charges are pending on several other involved individuals. The Sheriff's Office would like to thank the many concerned members of the public who provided information on this investigation. Anyone with additional information is asked to call the Criminal Investigation Division. So, um, clearly didn't learn his lesson. I'm going to say that probably the um, the penalties involved for uh, this type of theft are, are... I'm going to go ahead and say that they're not strict enough. If this is, he's just going to, he's going to do this, he's going to get out, and then he's going to go steal some Pokemon cards. Maybe that's just me. I mean, at least the Pokemon card stuff wasn't as dumb as stealing fishing lures. But at the same time, he he was dumb enough to get caught anyway. Next up, we have our other offender, who is not quite on the screen, so we're going to drag him over. All right, maybe we can blow this up a little bit too. Uh, And then we'll go back and watch that video. We have... Our other offender here. Why does he look so... Is he happy that he's going to jail in this monk shot? All right. Regardless, we have Dustin Anthony Whittern, the other Pokemon nabber. Uh, and I like I like this, this little summary sheet here where it says current offense information and it has their highest ranked offense, drugs. Um, so usually with this type of thing, with the theft and everything else, the, the drugs either become involved or they become the, the reason for uh, the, the crimes in general. So it doesn't surprise me, but it's also kind of funny that it's almost like a, it's like we don't have room for all the charges. So we're just going to, we're going to put the highlights in here on, on the most, most, ex- most, not most expensive, but the most uh, highest rank or most offensive offense, if you will. Um, so we got Minnesota Department of Corrections. Uh, once again, I mean, people that repeat offenders, uh, and thankfully, uh, they were charged for, or they're being charged for the, the incident. Um, and again, anticipated release date 2024. So it looks like he got out prior to that 2022 and then immediately went back in incarcerated as of one twenty three. 123 2023 hmm right so yeah wild crazy i don't know what what do they need to do you guys let me know what you think i man i I don't know i think like you you do this one time you get caught on it you do it multiple times there there needs to be some sort of punishment that's going to dissuade these people from from stealing from honest businesses that are just trying to make a buck um, all right. All right. All right. I know guys, I promised that we could watch this, uh, video, the, the, the Fox news video. Let's, uh, if it does end up being like copyright struck or something like that, then we'll have to, uh, remove it from the video. But if not, here it is. Oh, wait, 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 I need audio. I need audio. There we go. We might need to jack it up too. Third degree theft charges have been filed against two men. Fox Nine's Mary McGuire shows us how authorities were finally able Oh man, we messed it up. We messed it up. More than a year after a We're not editing. robbery at a Forest Lake gaming store, third degree theft charges have been filed against two men. Fox 9's Mary McGuire shows us how authorities were finally able to track down these suspected thieves. In the game of Pokemon, the goal is to catch them all. Now, more than a year after a brazen robbery here in Forest Lake, authorities have done just that. Justice has been 14 long months in the making for Eric Johnson and Punch Out Gaming after thieves stole thousands of dollars in Pokemon cards after cutting through the store's wall. The whole thing caught on camera. Knowing who these guys were for the last 13, 14 months drove us crazy since they were still running around on the streets. 
In the end, it wasn't Team Rocket, but two men in their late 30s that detectives tracked down. Criminal charges allege Matthew Kuypers and Dustin Whittern worked together to break into the store last February, using a knife to cut through drywall, sneaking in through a hole, and stealing $150,000 in Pokemon cards. The shelves were stocked full. Once COVID hit, everyone from our age went back to their, back to their youth. Everything from the 80s and 90s became popular again. Johnson says online sleuths identified the men quickly, but it took law enforcement a bit longer to make their case. In the end, it was what the men left behind at the scene that sealed their fate. Once the D DNA came, these guys already had huge criminal records, so that kind of helped push it. Since the heist, the store has made some security upgrades. They've also leased the space next door where the thieves broke in and are transforming it into a new gaming area. And yeah. any way that uh, any criminals can cut through this wall? <laughs> they got to have some pretty good power tools and a lot of time. Johnson tells me while he is happy that charges have been filed in this case, he's disappointed that these thieves won't be facing stricter penalties. Reporting in Forest Lake, Mary McGuire, Fox 9. I guess there's no way to really recover that merchandise no. either once it's resold on the market. So, well, they got they got caught. So they got good, caught. Right? Yeah, um, Pokemon cards are worth a lot. Um, Who would have known? If you've got old ones lying around, just know that, okay? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, guys, your Pokemon cards—they're worth a lot. All right, well, that's that's good news. Feels good uh, that they were apprehended. Feels not so good that it seems like they're just going to come out and, and do something else. But at least the game store, at least other game stores can hopefully learn from this and beef up their security systems. And they need to. They need to. Get, get, no, we're not. We're not watching any of this. Cut it out. Anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in. Join the Discord. Love you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.